I find it unbelievable that so many otherwise seemingly thoughtful and decent middle people, middle Australians, middle Brits, middle Americans, are siding with Hamas without realising it, I suspect. If they had endless demands for a ceasefire always aimed at Israel, when the obvious point is that if you want the thing to stop, you tell Hamas, get out from your cowardly position behind women and children and stand up like people of some courage and face the consequences of your actions. You're the people who cause this. You're the people who can stop it. It's as but simple when we as call that, for yeah. Israel to stop it, not Hamas, I immediately find myself thinking, why are you not understanding that it's Hamas that we need to be calling on? Well, unfortunately, the, the real answer for that, of course, is that so many people have been bamboozled for decades with, with just completely wrong information about Israel and quote unquote Palestine and everything else. I mean, I don't need to give you a, a history lesson here, but there never was a country known as Palestine. Obviously, there was the British Mandate of Palestine, which is the ancient land of Israel. A, a famous Jew by the name of Jesus of Nazareth lived in a place that we now call the West Bank, which used to be known as Judea and Samaria. You'll never believe who lived in Judea, which which of course that's <clears throat> the story of Hanukkah, that whether you're Jewish or not, basically everyone knows that story, the Jews defending the Judean hills against the Greek invaders. Uh, I was just in Israel a couple of weeks ago and to, and to walk that land and to walk in those areas and go to Jerusalem and see all these things, you can breathe and live history, but there's been just an abject uh, demolition of what true history is. So then many, many people take the wrong side on it. But I would also say to your point, you're completely right, obviously. This war could be over by the time I finish this sentence. All Hamas would have to do is surrender and return the hostages, assuming some of them are still alive, which who knows if they are. But short of that, and, and their goal obviously is not a ceasefire. Their goal is they want to bleed Israel out, meaning, okay, they can't win militarily, but you can hopefully just turn enough of the world against the Jews. It's just kind of the story of every Jewish holiday. The world came for us, a bunch of us died, but here we are, we still survived. So Israel will survive this. Um, but I would also say that the real way for this to end, and this has been the saddest part of the American policy on this, is we know the entire Hamas leadership is at a hotel in Qatar. Everyone knows it, no one disputes it. And we could have said to Qatar on October 8th, if you do not have Hamas stand down right now and return those soldiers, we are gonna blow up Qatar. Qatar is a tiny country, nobody would have cared. This thing would have been over immediately, but we have a completely feckless administration. And again, we don't know who's running it. I mean, that's, that's the real problem with talking American politics these days. We can lay everything at the footsteps of Joe Biden, but the question is who really is running the policy? Because I don't think actually that it's Joe Biden. I don't know who it is, but, uh, but either way, he's the figurehead for it.